Don't you think it's about time that we purchase ourselves a home? Buying property and building a house, it's all so expensive. It's not as easy as you think. Let me take a look at our household accounts to see how we're doing money-wise. Hey, we're spending way too much on food. Hand over your car to me. Instead, I'm giving you $30 a month. You can buy groceries using this money. I can't do that! Well, don't tell me that you can't do it until you've tried. Trouble Busters! Melanie, I love what you made for dinner tonight. You're a great cook. I made her meal with the freshest ingredients. That's probably why everything tastes so good. The preparation itself was really easy. You should take credit for the food because it's delicious. Sarah thinks so too, right? Yes, I love what mommy makes for us. You really are a great cook. My name is Melanie. I'm a typical housewife. I live with my husband Aaron and our daughter Sarah. Aaron's mother is no longer with us, so sometimes his father Alan comes over to our house to have dinner with us. Alan used to work in the military so he can be strict at times, but he's loving and his own way and treats me like a real daughter. Melanie, I hope that you're not having a hard time raising Sarah and also taking care of the house at the same time. Dad, you don't need to worry about Melanie. She's doing just fine. Besides, Melanie doesn't work, so she's not as busy as you think. Um... But I know it's not that easy spending all day with a child and having to put dinner on the table every night. We love having you over for dinner and I love to cook, so it's really no problem for me. I'd love to pay you for some of the groceries since I come over so often. Dad, you don't need to do that. Melanie's good at spending our money wisely, so she keeps a record of our savings and makes sure that we don't overspend. That's right, so there's no need for you to pay for the groceries. Thank you for offering, though. Melanie's a housewife. It's her job to take care of the family finances. I'm not sure if my husband Aaron looked down on me or housewives in general but he would often say mean things about me. But I couldn't say anything because he was the one bringing money into our family. I wasn't happy that he put me down, but I tried not to let it bother me too much. Tonight, Aaron was out with his friends for a high school reunion. I wondered if he'd be coming home soon. Melanie, I'm home! How was the reunion? Did you have fun? Don't you think it's about time that we purchase ourselves a home? Where's this coming from? Well, I saw my old friends today and many of them had already purchased homes. Let's move out of this place and buy a new house. Buying property and building a house, it's all so expensive. It's not as easy as you think. Let me take a look at our household accounts to see how we're doing money-wise. Hey, we're spending way too much on food. I'm careful about the prices of the groceries that I purchase. I don't think that I'm overspending. Well, numbers don't lie. You have to do better. One of my former classmates told me that he is a family of six, and they only spend $60 a month on food. We should be able to do the same. How can they do that? They must be growing the majority of their food in their garden or something. And my sister has way more savings than we do. You need to try harder. What happened to all the money I earn? Doesn't your sister work in the military? My sister-in-law Helen worked in the military and she lived in a dorm, which meant that she didn't use that much money on a daily basis. Does it matter what she does for a living? My point is that she has much more money saved than we do. We are a family of three, so $30 a month should be enough money for groceries, right? That means that I can only use a dollar a day. That's impossible. I'm going to hold on to your credit card until we save up enough money. Hand over your card to me. Instead, I'm giving you $30 a month. You can buy groceries using this money. I can't do that! Well, don't tell me that you can't do it until you've tried. Now that Aaron was keen on saving up for a new house, I had to be even more careful with my spending. He took away my credit card so I didn't have the freedom to buy what I needed. It cost me $20 to buy rice that would last us for one month, so I was left with $10 to buy other ingredients. Aaron had no idea what he was talking about. What he was asking me to do was out of the question. I had to resort to buying cheap vegetables so that we had enough food to last us for a month. And I had to be creative with condiments because I could no longer afford to buy different types. I had to do the best with what I already had. I wish that I were in a world of Animal Crossing so that I could catch my own fish and pick my own fruit and somehow get by. Is this all you made for dinner tonight? I stir-fried some bean sprouts and Chinese cabbage and sprinkled some salt on top. How am I supposed to become full with just salty vegetables? I've had a long day at work and I'm starving. I want to eat a steak. We can't afford meat with the money that you gave me, Aaron. If you want to save up for a house, we need to stick to vegetables. But can't you buy some meat and make it last for a month? This is where you put your skills as a housewife to the test. What was the point of you becoming a housewife if you're not able to contribute to this household? Are you trying to say that I'm useless? That's right. I mean, what have you done for this family recently? I may not be making money like you, but there's a lot of unpaid work that I do around the house to make sure that we can all live comfortably. And I bet you're not spending the money that I gave you wisely. If you were a good housewife, you would make me a good steak. How can you say that to me? I've been trying really hard to make meals within our small budget. You should give me more credit. Well, can't you try to look for a cheaper supermarket then? Don't go to the nearest supermarket because it's convenient. You should choose where to shop based on the prices. I suggest that you look at some supermarkets outside our neighborhood because there could be cheaper options. I have a thought. Have you 
considered the fact that maybe your classmates were including the price of rice and condiments into their monthly food budget, and it's possible that their families have a farm or vegetable garden where they could get some food for free. I don't know how the other families do it. I just know that they're doing a better job than you. When I was still single, $30 a month was more than enough money to pay for food. But now we're a family of three, so you can't expect me to be able to buy all the food that we need on the same budget. Why are you being so difficult? What is your problem? I was able to live off $30 a month for food, and I wasn't even trying, so if you made more of an effort, I'm sure that it's doable. You just don't get it. I'd like to see you try then. You're being really unreasonable. I can see that we're not going to come to an agreement about this. Our opinions aside, I just need you to do what I ask. Mommy, are you okay? Yes, I'm okay. Sorry for arguing like that with your dad. Well, sometimes people fight, but you can make up soon, right? I'm sorry that I was only able to make one dish for us tonight. I hope that you don't get too hungry later. You can have my rice because I'm not hungry after arguing with your dad. I was very concerned because Sarah wasn't getting enough nutrition from the food that I was serving her and was starting to lose weight. As her mother, I wanted the freedom to buy her as much food as she needed on the small budget. It wasn't possible, though. Aaron controlled the money in our household, so I couldn't spend any money in secret even if I wanted to. And Sarah was too young to go to school, so I had to stay home with her all day to look after her, which meant that I couldn't get a part-time job. But then I decided I should get a job that allowed me to work from home. But it was really hard to concentrate on my new work because I was always hungry and malnourished. I had to come up with a way to get out of this nightmare. I'm so hungry that it's hard to concentrate on this one task. What am I going to do? In addition to work, I began writing an online blog about my daily life. It helped me relieve all the stress that I was feeling. And the best part was that writing a blog cost me no money. Mommy, what are you doing? I'm writing a blog. It's an online version of a diary. I have a diary too. I like to draw in it. Writing down my thoughts helps me relax. Can you show me your blog once you're finished writing in it? Actually, I'm a little embarrassed to show you. Why are you embarrassed? I'm not sure, but I am. In truth, I didn't want Sarah to see all the negative things I wrote in my blog. After Sarah told me that she was interested in reading my blog, I began to write about happy things too, so that even if she saw them, the content wouldn't be upsetting. Mommy, show me your blog, please. It's getting late. You need to go to bed now. I can show you my blog tomorrow. Okay. I was trying to write positive things in my blog, but it was really difficult because the reality was that I was under so much stress. Stress. I decided that instead of writing about how I felt each day, I would write about what I was doing to save money. From that day on, I began to write about the things I did to save money and posted recipes of foods that didn't cost that much money to make. If the number of people reading my blog went up, so would the money that I received from the advertisements that were posted on my blog. At first, I didn't make any money at all, then I was discouraged, but I told myself that I wasn't writing the blog for money. A few months passed since our family started saving up for a new house. May I come in and speak with you for a few minutes? Yes, please come in. I work at the Child Consultation Center. Your neighbors have raised concerns. They think that your daughter is not being fed properly. I see. I am aware that my daughter has lost some weight. Yes, quite a lot, I think. She looks malnourished. Also, if one of your neighbors witnessed your daughter eating some plants that were growing on the side of a road. I had no idea. My poor girl. Would it be okay for me to come in and look around? We need to make sure that your daughter is being cared for properly. Y yes, you may. My mom didn't do anything wrong. Excuse me? It's not my mom's fault that I'm not able to eat all the food that I want to. It's not good for your health that you've lost so much weight, though. We need to fix this situation, otherwise you might become ill. You can tell me the truth. I read in a book that there are some plants that are edible. That's why I tried to eat a plant off the street the other day. Sarah, I'm so sorry I wasn't able to put enough food on the table for you. I wanted to find some delicious plants so that I could bring them home and share them with my family. Please don't be mad at my mommy. She didn't do anything wrong. I see. Thank you for sharing this with me me. Well, what shall we do now? May I look around the house a little, and after that, the three of us can sit down and have a chat. Please, go ahead. The woman from the child consultation center looked around our house and told me that everything looked okay and said that she didn't think that there was any abuse going on in the house. After that, she left our house. Although I've never raised my hand towards Sarah, I was shocked that some of our neighbors assumed that Sarah was living in a troubled home. Sarah, this is all my fault. I should have given you more food so that you didn't have an empty stomach all the time. I'm so sorry about this. It's okay, mommy. I'm fine. You don't need to worry about me. I feel sleepy, so I'm gonna take a nap now. I was concerned for Sarah's health because not only was she really skinny, but she also seemed to lack energy. Before, she would play outside at a park, but recently she got tired easily and would take naps during the day. It must have to do with the fact that she wasn't getting enough nutrition. I was so mad at myself for making my daughter suffer in this way. I haven't been able to put a decent meal on her table for months now, but now that it was affecting Sarah's health negatively, I had to come up with a plan to make the current situation better. Good morning, Mommy. Mommy, why are you crying?
crying. It's nothing, Sarah. I was just thinking about a song that I liked and I was crying because I was touched by the lyrics. That's all. I don't believe you. You look sad. Sarah. Sarah was a very smart girl and she realized that I too was suffering. She was such a sweet and kind girl. I was relieved that she didn't turn out to be like her father. Mommy, I'm going to help you be happy again. What do you plan on doing? Who are you calling? Can you please come over to our house now? My mommy is sick because she hasn't been able to eat properly. I have no idea. I was putting so much burden on you. I feel terrible about all this. You don't need to say sorry. Grandpa's on his way here with some yummy food. Yay! Thank you so much, Sarah. I'd been listening to Aaron up until now because he basically gave me no choice, but I couldn't take it anymore. I couldn't let Sarah suffer just because I couldn't stand up to my own husband. I didn't want Sarah to be hungry anymore. I wasn't going to forgive Aaron for what he put us through. Trouble busters. Chinese cabbage and bean sprouts again? I'm sick and tired of eating this crap all the time. Can't you make something decent for once? How come there are two extra plates on the table? Who is this for? For us, Aaron. W what are you two doing here? From what I gather, you've only been eating Chinese cabbage and bean sprouts every day. Yes, that's right. Don't you feel sorry for me? I work all day long and this is the only thing that Melanie serves me. I asked Melanie to be prudent with her spending because we're saving up to buy a new house. And she's decided to make us the same thing for dinner every night. We're all suffering, but she isn't even saving us that much money. It really sucks. Melanie's the one that I feel sorry for. Why? Melanie told me everything. You're only giving her $30 a month to buy food. That's outrageous. What can she buy with such a paltry sum? You're such an idiot. Always were. I need her to save money because we're trying to buy a new house. That doesn't justify giving Melanie only $30 a month for food. You're family of three. You don't seem to understand numbers, Aaron. I have a friend who is a family of six, and they get by on just $60 a month for food. If they can do it, we should be able to do the same. I know who you're talking about. Your friend is my friend's little brother. I asked her how her family buys food on such a small budget, and she told me that her parents are rice farmers and they get rice for free. They also get vegetables for free from the farmers that are friends with her parents. I was wondering how they were able to survive on such a small budget. And as for the meat, they know a hunter who gives them leftover meat for free. So they get most of their food for free. They only need to buy a few things a month. What about you then? You have way more savings than we do. What's your secret? We want to save money like you're doing. I work in the military and live in a dorm. Do you understand what that means? I don't need to pay for food, housing, or clothes. I barely spend any money. That's my secret for saving money. That's why I'm able to save most of my savings. Well, we may not be able to save as much as you, but we should still be able to do it. It's okay for you to compare yourself to another family, but at the very least, compare yourself to someone in a similar situation. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense. Why are you two so critical of me? Are you trying to tell me that this is all my fault? That's exactly what we're trying to tell you. Open your eyes, Aaron. I'm going to help you change that negative personality of yours. What do you mean by that? Melanie, would it be alright with you if Aaron stayed at my place for the next three months? I have no problem with that. You're going to live with Helen and I for the next three months, and we're going to ask you to prepare all our meals by using only $30 a month. You got that? And on top of that, you're going to do all of the house chores too. Is that really necessary? I have work. Why do I have to do all the chores anyway? You're the one that's asking Melanie to do the same thing. Shouldn't you be able to do it too? But she doesn't have a full-time job like I do. I come home exhausted each night. I can't do the housework on top of everything else. Housework is for housewives that stay at home all day. Don't assume that housewives do nothing all day at home. You don't seem to understand that housework is demanding and takes up a lot of time. Melanie, will you help me out here? Tell my dad that I don't have the time to do the house chores of this house. I'll give you more money to buy food, so will you be willing to help me out then? No, thank you. You don't earn any money, so if I leave you alone with Sarah for three months, it'll be a problem for you too, right? I guess you don't know the real me then. What do you mean by that? Take a look at this. What is this? This is a book about saving money written by some housewife. A while ago, I started writing a blog about saving money and also included food recipes that don't cost a lot of money to make. At first, it was more of a hobby to me and I wasn't making any money, but then people began to comment about my writing and how funny it was. They also liked my food recipes and it became a hot topic on the internet. Wow, that's amazing, Melanie. Yes, I'm proud of my blog. Lots of people began reading my blog and one day a publisher came to me and asked if I'd turn my blog into a book. Why didn't you tell me any of this? The book hasn't even been published yet, but so many people have reserved it online already, and the publisher has agreed to print additional copies. I've already begun work on my second book, too. I'm very excited about all this. I can't wait for your book to be published. I'll make sure to buy a copy. So I really don't need you in my life anymore, Aaron. I'll be just fine with Sarah. The only thing that I ask of you is that we get a divorce. Where's this coming from? I don't want a divorce. 
I won't change my mind about this, and I don't want to spend the rest of my life with someone like you. I'm going to make money on my own and take care of Sarah by myself. What are you going to do after you publish your two books? I don't see you being successful for too long. Once you lose all the attention from your readers, you're going to regret the fact that you divorced me. I'm sure of it. Aaron, shut up and accept the fact that Melanie is no longer in love with you. Melanie's already signed the divorce papers, and I suggest that you do the same. Yes, Aaron, listen to Dad and sign the divorce papers. No way! I don't want to! Aaron, hurry up and do it! Just sign the papers, Aaron. Why do you two have to pressure me into signing the divorce papers? Hurry up and sign the papers! Okay, I will! Are you happy now? Melanie, I'm so sorry for all the pain that Aaron caused you. I'm going to re-educate him so that he doesn't bully anyone ever again. Let's go, Aaron! <laughs> Bye, Daddy! Bye, Aaron. Have fun living with your father. Aaron, when is dinner going to be ready? Hurry up, will you? I'm starving. I it'll be ready soon. Is this for the three of us? That's not enough food. Do something about it. Make us something that will fill up our stomachs. We don't want stir-fried vegetables. Why do you two have such big appetites? Dad, you're old, and Helen, you're a girl. It's because Helen and I get a lot of exercise. Bring us some meat, Aaron. I'm hungry. If you don't have the money to buy meat, go hunt a deer or something. Helen's absolutely right. Go get us the ingredients for our dinner. Oh, no. I already used up $30, and it's only been three days. What am I going to do? You chewed Melanie out for not doing a good enough job, but at least she made the money last for a month. What are we going to do about food for the rest of the month? You told us that it was easy to live off $30 a month. It seems that I was wrong. I'm really sorry. Would you be so kind enough to give me some more money for food this month? But you're the one that came up with a $30 rule in the first place. I'm not going to give you any money, so you need to deal with this on your own. <laughs> hey, Melanie, it's me. It's me. Uh, who is this? It's me, Aaron. I really need your help. I ended up using $30 already, and I have four weeks to go. I finally understand how hard it was for you, too. I'm so sorry. I'm glad that you know what it was like for me. Yes, I'm sorry about that dumb rule that I created. I deeply regret it now, so please help me. What do you want me to do? Will you consider taking me back? I want to live with you and Sarah again. I hate here living with my dad and sister. I don't think so. I'm happy living with Sarah and we don't need you in our lives anymore. I want you to know how sorry I am. I won't ask you to save money anymore. You can have my money however you like. And I'll do all the housework too. So please, say yes to living together again. It's too late to apologize to me now. I tried to tell you how difficult it was for me to buy all our food with just $30, but you wouldn't listen to me. You didn't help me at all when I was really struggling, and I hate you for it. Please, don't do this. I need you and Sarah in my life. You're rich now, right? I heard that your books are selling really well. I don't have any savings left after I paid you alimony. Please, please. Sarah and I starved for months because of that stupid rule that you made up. I don't have the energy or the will to take care of you anymore. You're on your own. Goodbye, Aaron. Aaron's so selfish and he always will be. Good riddance. Mommy, who is that on the phone? No one important. I didn't want Aaron to call me anymore, so I blocked his phone number. I plan on having a quiet and happy life with Sarah by living off the alimony from Aaron and the royalties from my books. I'd finally gotten rid of Aaron and cut all ties with him, but I still see his father, Alan, and his sister, Helen, from time to time. I'm so grateful to them both because they've always treated me like real family, and they've been nothing but kind to me. Lunch is on me today. Order anything that you like. Aaron would be furious if he found out that we're having this nice lunch while he stayed home. I bet he's too hungry to even get mad at us. I'm so happy to see Grandpa and Auntie Helen. I'm having so much fun. Me too. Thank you for agreeing to see us, although I'm no longer married to Aaron. We love seeing you and Sarah. It makes us very happy too. You may no longer be married to my brother, but you'll always be family to us. Aaron called me the other day to tell me that he spent his monthly budget for food in just three days. I wonder how he's holding up. If need be, we'll get him to eat wild grass so you don't need to worry about him. You're right. He's a grown-up. He can take care of himself. After that, we met Alan and Helen on a regular basis. Each time we'd go to a restaurant and enjoy a nice meal together. Alan and Helen told me about how Aaron's been living a really simple life at home because he doesn't have any money to spend freely. I suppose he finally understands the hardships that Sarah and I had to go through. All because he wanted to save up to buy a new house. I'm thinking of writing a new book about my former life with Aaron. I think that people would be interested to read about that. <laughs> Trouble Busters.